Let's see 10 foods peasants ate. Number 10. Black bread. This isn't your fancy sourdough from the local bakery. We're talking about a loaf so hardcore that it could double as a weapon. It was made from rye. But the real secret ingredient was tree bark. And not just a pinch for that earthy flavor. It's in there because wheat flour was super expensive back then. Now, imagine biting into a bread so tough that your teeth stage a protest. Black bread wasn't just a meal. It was a dental hazard. Soldiers used to use this bread as plates. They'd pile their food on top. And once the bread got soggy enough, they'd eat their plate. These days, we're all about being eco-friendly and reducing waste. But medieval folks were way ahead of us. This bread was so common. It was like the medieval version of fast food. Cheap and filling and probably not great for your health. But when you're a peasant in the Middle Ages, you're not exactly spoiled for choice. It's either black bread or starvation. Number 9. Dinner Shows this one is not a specific food, but it was too wild to skip. People in the Middle Ages loved a good surprise during their meals. So chefs came up with the idea of serving live animals that looked cooked. For example, they would take the feathers off a chicken, then color it so it would look roasted. Now they would wait for the chicken to fall asleep in the kitchen. Then, it was brought out and placed on the table. But just as people were about to slice into it, it would wake up and run off the table. They also did the same thing with frogs. They would put live frogs in a pie. When the pie was cut open, the frogs would jump out and try to run away. It sounds crazy, but this was their idea of a great time. Number 8. Roasted Peacock This one is the opposite of the previous dish. Roasted peacocks were seen as a delicacy, and were reserved only for special days. They would start by carefully removing the peacock's skin and feathers. The peacock was then roasted. Once roasted, they would put the skin and feathers back on to make the peacock look like it's alive. And peacock meat was believed to last 30 days meaning they would have food for a whole month after they made this dish. Number 7. Pies and Pastries Peasants came up with a genius way to keep their food preserved and portable. They'd take whatever they had, meats, veggies, or fruits, and wrap them up in a thick and sturdy pastry dough called a coffin. This wasn't your melt-in-the-mouth kind of pastry. It was more like an edible suitcase for your food. Now, the thing about these coffins is that they weren't always meant to be eaten. Think of them as the medieval Tupperware. They were there to cook the food, hold it together, and keep it from spoiling. So if you bit into a medieval pie and thought, why does this crust taste like cardboard? Well, because you weren't supposed to eat that part in the first place. These pies and pastries were perfect for a day out in the fields. Imagine you're a peasant, and you've worked all day. Lunchtime rolls around, and what do you have? A hearty, self-contained meal that you can eat with your hands. Number 6. Beavers. Back then, people were pretty much fasting most of the year. That's a whole lot of growling stomachs. So, the church tried to cut everyone some slack. They said, Okay, you can't eat meat during fasting periods, but fish? Fish is okay. So people start stretching this fish idea to the max. They looked at a beaver swimming around and doing its beaver thing, and they thought, Hey, that tail kind of looks like a fish if you squint a bit, right? So they decide beaver tails are also okay during fasting, because apparently if it spends enough time underwater and sort of looks like a fish, then it must be a fish. Now, you've got the peasants chowing down on beaver tails because they're a cheap alternative to actual fish during Lent. But why stop there? Fast forward to the 17th century, and it's not just the tail that's on the menu for fasting days, but the whole beaver. Yeah, the logic here is that because beavers are such great swimmers, they're basically fish. Of course, this leads to the beaver being wiped out in England, Wales, and Scotland due to overconsumption. Their population has only recently made a comeback thanks to reintroduction programs from Canada. Number 5. Acorn Bread Now before you start thinking peasants were just out there munching on acorns straight from the tree, let me stop you. They had a method to their madness. Acorns are everywhere and free, but they're kind of inedible. You see, here's the deal with acorns. They're full of tannins. Tannins are what make your mouth feel dry when you drink a strong cup of tea. Raw acorns have so much tannin that eating them straight off the ground would make you want to throw up. Medieval folks had to get creative to make these acorns edible. They soaked and rinsed the acorns repeatedly to get rid of the tannins in them. Then, they would ground the acorns into flour and make bread with it. Number 4. Hedgehogs So hedgehogs are herbivores. They love munching on plants like leaves and stems, and they're really into tree bark. Because of this, the peasants considered them pests and they weren't exactly thrilled to have them around. So, when people caught them, it wasn't just pest control, it was dinner time. Catching and cooking a hedgehog wasn't as simple as you might think. The spikes make these guys pretty tricky to handle. 
but folks back then had a clever solution. They'd cover the hedgehog in mud. Then they'd roast it over a fire, with the mud on. The mud would dry up and form a hard shell around the hedgehog. When it was all cooked, they'd crack open the mud shell, and it would take off all the spikes, leaving just the meat inside. People said the meat tasted really good, kind of like chicken and pork mixed together. Hedgehogs weren't just for eating. They were also used as a kind of old-timey medicine. They even used them to cure toothache. People would burn those spiky thorns until they turned into ash. Then, they'd put that ash on a piece of cotton and stick it on the sore tooth. So basically, they would make a medieval dental filling. Number 3. Medieval Ale Water back then was sketchier than a two-star motel, so ale was the go-to drink for hydration. Even kids had their daily pint, because it was safer than water since the brewing process killed off the bacteria. But making ale wasn't just about fermenting some grains. The flavor came from herbs, but not just any herbs you could pick from your garden. Brewers needed a special license known as a grew it right to collect specific herbs for their ale. This made the herb blend in each ale a closely guarded secret, kind of like medieval Coca-Cola recipes. And for a bit of quality assurance, towns had official ale testers. Yes, people whose job was to taste ale and make sure it wasn't rubbish. Some places, like the city of London, still appoint four ale tasters annually. Imagine having ale taster on your LinkedIn profile. Number 2. Pigeons Peasants were not allowed to hunt deer or boar in the king's forests, but hunting and eating pigeons was allowed. These birds were one of the few types of meat that peasants could legally hunt or raise. But here's where it gets really wild. Pigeons weren't just for eating. Their blood was considered a hot commodity in medieval medicine. It was a cure for a bunch of illnesses. The logic? Since pigeons could fly high in the sky, they're closer to the heavens. So their blood must possess some divine healing properties. It's like they believed these birds had a special connection to the health gods or something. This belief led to the use of pigeon blood in treating everything from fevers to what we'd now consider more serious conditions like epilepsy. Got a headache? Pigeon blood. Feeling feverish? Pigeon blood. It was the Tylenol of the Middle Ages, and the process wasn't for the squeamish. We're talking about fresh, warm blood applied directly to the body or mixed into potions. Number 1. Literal Garbage I mean, what better way to end the video than a dish called garbage? Yes, that's the actual name of a dish from the Middle Ages. This is probably the worst named dish in history, and its ingredient list isn't much better. To make garbage, you have to first take all the worst parts of a chicken, the head, the liver, and the gizzards, and put them in a pot, then pour fresh beef broth over them, add pepper, cinnamon, cloves, mace, parsley, and sage. We're not done yet. Take an entire loaf of bread and dunk it into this medieval stew. Boil it. Strain it. Then, boil it again. Now, add some juice from unripe apples. Add salt and a sprinkle of saffron for color. Now you have two options to serve garbage. You can serve it English style, or you bravely leave in the bits of chicken, proudly presenting it as a chunky, meaty mess. Or, French style, where you strain it and serve it as a thin broth. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.